This is Denny Cherry, and welcome to Migrating Logins. The easiest way to migrate logins within a SQL Server environment is with the stored procedure sp underscore help underscore rev login. Unfortunately, this stored procedure is not included with SQL Server by default, so you'll have to go download it from the Microsoft website. The easiest way to find it is to simply search for sp underscore help rev login with either Bing or Google and take the result that's off the Microsoft webpage. It'll refer you to a KB article within the Microsoft.com website. Simply grab the source code and install the stored procedure in the master database. When you run the stored procedure, it will script out all logins on the system. You can then take the output from the stored procedure, which is going to be a series of create login statements, and then run those create login statements on your secondary server or on your new server, and the logins will then be created. The nice thing about using sp underscore help underscore rev login is that when it scripts out the SQL Server logins, it will create them with the appropriate SIDs so that the logins and the users match automatically. Let's go ahead and take a look at using sp underscore help rev login. Now I've already downloaded the store procedure and executed it. So you can see here a series of create login statements, some with passwords and some without. The ones with passwords are gonna be SQL Server logins of some sort. The ones without are gonna be Windows logins. If we scroll over, we'll see that these particular logins have been disabled because these are actually not traditional logins, but logins that are used for simple internal processing. At the moment, this system has no SQL Server logins. So let's go ahead and create one and see the output that comes out after we make that change. We create a new login just like normal, select SQL authentication. We're just gonna call it sample 21. For the password, we give it a password that fits our security requirements. We won't be needing any of the password security, and we simply click OK. We rerun SP Help Rev Login, and at the bottom we should get a new output. Create login sample 21 with our password. Now you'll notice the password is always in a binary form here. That's because we don't actually want to know what the password is, we simply know that the password is already hashed, specified by this keyword here that says hashed. The very important piece of this is this SID parameter because we're now passing in the SID that the login had on the old system or on our AG1 server. So that when we create the login on the new server, we'll get the same SID. This way the users and logins are gonna match up correctly. Our default database is set the same and all our policy information is gonna be set the same as well. Another way to move logins between one server and another is gonna be to use the SQL Server integration services. Now, SQL Server Integration Services actually provides a login transfer task to make it very easy for you to move all the logins. You simply select the logins you want to use and move them across. The entire thing is actually a three-step process. You're going to create a new package, and within that package, create source and destination connections. You're going to select the logins that you want to be transferred, as well as some options as to what to do in the event that the login already exists, and then run the package. So let's go ahead and look at a demonstration using SQL Server Integration Services to transfer the logins. So here I've got the Business Intelligence Development Studio open. This is actually SQL Server Data Tools, which is the replacement for Business Intelligence Development Studio. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. And for our project type, we're gonna select an Integration Services project. Once we've created our project and the file has opened, we can scroll down, open the Other Tasks folder, and locate the transfer logins task. Drag that onto the design surface, and we'll get our transferred login tasks window. We're gonna get an error message right now, but that's okay. We can skip the general tab and move on to the logins tab. We set our source connection, select a new connection, and here put our server name. In this case, we're gonna set our source server for AG1, and then click OK. For our destination server, AG2, and then click OK. For the logins to transfer, we can either transfer all logins, selected logins, or all logins from selected databases. We'll go ahead and go with selected logins. For the logins list, we can select the logins that we wish to transfer. We're just going to transfer the sample 21 login because we know that login doesn't exist. Options. If the object exists, what do we want to do? Do we want to fail the task 
Do we want to overwrite the login or do we want to skip the login? We're going to want to skip the login. The last option here is the copy SIDS option. If we don't care about the SIDS matching, we should leave this as false. However, for transferring logins, odds are we care about this and we're going to set this to true. When we click OK, we wait for the window to update, this X should go away. It can sometimes take Visual Studio a minute or two as it's rereading all the properties to make sure that everything's working correctly before it can say that everything is going to actually be working. As you can see, once Immigration Services has verified that all the information is correct, the red X simply goes away. We can now run this task, and this will transfer the login from one server to another. We can do this by clicking the play button, which will then allow the package to run. Once the package has completed successfully, we'll get a green X saying that the login has been transferred. We can verify this information by stopping the package and going to Management Studio, connecting to the server AG2, looking at the security node, and seeing the sample 21 login has been created. In summary, there's two ways to transfer logins between SQL servers. Using T-SQL by running the stored procedure sp underscore help underscore rev login, or by using SQL Server Integration Services. In either case, the end result is the same that the logins are created on the second server.